Okay. Okay. Let me make uh, several comments about the uh, lab. The lab's going to be uh, uh, again. I'll have it in due Monday. I might, might take some of y'all the weekend to finish. Let me first make a comment about fitting the data. Uh, right. The data is a, is in Excel. You'll probably have to transfer it to a text file. Remember, a text file doesn't want any text in it. Only wants numbers. I don't know why the input processor doesn't like text, um, but you might have to get rid of the header. You just want the data itself. The input analyzer for Arena automatically puts a translation in there. It automatically translates the data according to whatever whatever the minimum value is. That's not necessarily the best thing to do. It does not it does not determine if a translation is the best fit. It just does it. So you might want to try the data with and without a translation. In fact, in one of the um, when I was doing it, one of my data, one of the clerks had translated data, the other one I didn't. So it just really depends on what you think is best. Um, again, and also. When the input analyzer ranks things, it ranks things according to a, some least squares criteria. It is not a statistical criteria. So whatever you do, make sure you accept something that is statistically valid. And it gives the chi-square and um, uh, KS statistics. Another aspect of the input analyzer, you cannot use the KS statistic on discrete data. So if the input analyzer thinks the data is discrete, it won't do the KS test. Um, the, some of the, the data is all integers, so you might want, if you put a point zero for some of those values, then it'll, it'll I think the input analyzer will know it's a non-integer. Non um, let me talk about the uh, modeling too. Um, they wait. Let me make sure I got everything about. What? Let me ask you a question. When you're fitting data, some distributions have advantages and some disadvantages. Um, the input analyzer seems to like the beta distribution a lot. What is the what is a disadvantage of the beta distribution? If you use the beta distribution for something, what would be a disadvantage of that? Or when, when, no, what is the characteristic? What is um, what is? I'm not sure I'm asking the question properly. Uh, what are some what is the what are some characteristics of the beta distribution? When is a good time to use the beta distribution? Anytime you know you have a fixed minimum and a fixed maximum, the beta distribution is a good choice. Okay. That also means if you don't suspect, if you suspect there is no fixed maximum, beta is not a good choice because beta is going to limit it. Okay, so if you have data and you know there's a physical limitation, you can have no smaller and no larger than a certain number. Beta is great. If there's no physical limitation, beta is not necessarily so good, because one of the advantages of using a distribution is, if you don't have a large data sample, I mean, well, first of all, your data is always going to be limited, just because you have a finite collection of data points. Okay. So you, I, I'm suggesting you should be a little skeptical of the beta if it comes up with beta. Um, okay, let's talk about stations a little bit. You will need stations in this. Um, let me look at an arena model. What happened? Uh, this might have just frozen.
Um, okay, we talked about um, stations last time. Uh, stations uh, well I, I really need to demonstrate it. I'll, I'll, let me restart the computer in a minute let me uh, talk about something else first um, you have a, a a fixed time period this is the post office you know the post office used to have different different lines for each clerk now no post offices don't and we're going back to that transition phase. We have an old-fashioned post office. It's only open in the morning. And the question is, you know, how much, you know, I've, the manager has heard a lot about other post offices going to one queue, so we're going to try it. How much does it actually save? That's the question. Um, one thing I've asked you to do is um, give the percent decrease. The what what you'll do is is you'll get statistics on the difference between having four separate queues and having one queue. That'll be you'll get statistics on the difference so that you don't have it you don't have to print out. We really haven't finished that in class, so I did not want to ask you to print to a file. I'm just, I want you to do seven replications. So I thought, thought seven replications, I thought maybe ten might be a little bit too much to do everything by hand, so I thought seven you can manage by hand. So you'll do ten, seven replications and go ahead on the second sheet, write down the results from each of the seven. And so then you, you'll be able to do a paired t-test. Okay, so look at the differences, and you'll get a, um, you'll get the um, confidence interval based on the difference. So that'll be your upper and lower value. Take the the smallest difference, divide that by the um, mean value for the four um, Q thing, and that would be your percent. That, that's all I mean, it, because it just kind of gives a rough idea of, you know, what's my percentage increase, and it kind of gives you a rough idea of the range of increase, and that's what I want on that second page. Okay, so this is a post office that only works in the morning from 8.30 until noon, and then they close the door. Okay, I'm going to try to reset the computer, get Arena to work. I don't know what's, what froze on it, um, so go ahead and read it, and then we'll, I'll come back to this in a minute. Okay, let me um, talk about stations just a little bit because you're going to need to use stations. So stop looking at your computer and look up here because you're going to need this for the uh, assignment. Okay, you can and you can put a station in front of anything and the and the computer will identify it or arena will identify it as a station. Stations are found on the advanced transfer template. So here, what I have a simple example, I have a create and assign, and then I have a couple of different processes. Okay. Um, the station, we, we can put the station module oops, in front of any of those process, and now this process is identified as station one. Well, I'll just leave it like this, station one for now. And then we have station two. There's two advantages, well, there's several advantages to using stations. For this particular kind of time, there's also a block called pick station. This is what you're going to have to use. Okay, pick station allows you to pick which station the entity goes to. So I'm going to put that in front. So what happens, they, the there's a creation, an assignment, and then the entities go to pick station. If we open that up, um, there's different criteria that, the, that you can use for the pick station. Number in the queue, and see, that's what we're going to do. Right? For this particular case, we want number in the queue. And then what you have to put here is which station you go to and what's the name of the queue. Okay. 
So if you'll first define, before you use the pick station, if you'll first define the station and the process, then they'll be in the drop-down menu. So it makes it a little bit easier. So first define your four stations, then use the pick station. And it, it, so you'll have all the uh, names already set up. That's, that's what I would suggest. Um, okay. One other thing, you also notice you're going to have one replication is going to involve 22 days. Okay, what's the length of your day going to be? How, how, have you thought about it enough? How long will your day be? Okay. Um, what? Okay, the the doors are open for three and a half hours. If your day was three and a half hours, what would be the difficulty with the, your simulation? Yes. Um, what would be the conditions at the start of the second day? Yeah, you'd have people still in the system at the start of the next day, and that's not realistic, right? We've got to have an empty system at the start of the day. In fact, you'll notice their criteria is we're only going to measure waiting times for people that, arrive, that leave the system after 9. The reason for that is the people that come to begin with, we know they're not going to wait very long. doesn't matter what their system is because it hasn't started getting people in here yet. Okay? So the people that come at 8.30 have to come to an empty system. So your simulation has to be longer than three and a half hours. Okay? You can make it 24 hours. The trouble is it makes the simulation a lot less efficient. You could do that if you'd like. But you have to make sure it's long enough so the system is empty at the end of the day. Okay? So that means after three and a half hours, you can't let anybody into the system. You have to close the door. How are you going to close the door after th at noon? How, how will you close the door at noon? That's one of the things you're going to have to do. Say it again. No, because that's, that's random. Sometimes there might be more than 280. Sometimes there might be less. So 280 is just kind of a random number. I mean... That's just an average number of, of people that are there that come in. So we don't want to do that. Say it again. No. Uh, no. Well, I guess the schedule could work, actually. You, you, you could use it with a schedule. It's a little bit complicated because, remember, the day cannot end with zero. So you're going to have to offset your day somehow. There's an easier way to do it. That's pretty straightforward. It, yeah, a decide module. Exactly. Have a decide module. Since it's any time, so you would stick that right at this point. And, and just have a decide module at that point. Be, and then what's your... Your if statement, you have to remember, T now is continuous, so you have to use A mod on that one. Um, but since you're, everybody's not coming in, what, just to check your work, what I would do is to, I, I would collect how many people come in every day. It, the, the problem doesn't require it. But if you want confidence in your answer, I would suggest that you do two things. Check the however long your day is, you ought to check the number of people in the system at the end of the day to make sure it's zero. And unless, you know, I guess if you have 24 hours, you know it's going to be zero by then, so you don't have to do that then. But you ought to check the number of people that get into the system and see if it's close to, close to whatever, 280. Okay. Um, one other thing, 
I, I almost forgot. I'd like you to make one change in the instructions. In the middle of the, in the, middle of the description, there's a sentence. When, it's, when a customer arrives, he, she always picks the clerk with the shortest queue and then stays in that queue until being served. Okay? The time to walk, when you come in the door, you look around, you see, you know, what's the shortest score. Then it takes between 5 and 15 seconds to join that queue. Okay, add that. It takes, after you walk in the door, you make the decision, then you add the sentence. The time to walk to the selected queue is between 5 and 15 seconds. Hmm? Um, okay, the reason I'm doing that is I want to point out one other feature. After this picks, pick station, there is something called a route block, advanced transfer template. You'll see this route block, route module. After the pick station, so now they know where they're going. Ah. Okay, transfer, to, you, you got this pick station, transfer type. I need to add a station so this will work. Um, transfer type, there's several different things you can do. If you look at the various transfer types, one of the main uses of stations that we're probably not going to have time to cover is material handling devices. So if you have forklifts or you have a conveyor belt, then stations are designed for those type of things. A transport is, is when you have a resource-limited transfer of goods. So it would be a forklift or something on that order. Another option is the route option. Under route option, um, wait. Hmm, this is not working right. Uh, let's try this again. Oh, no, I don't need to. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing that. Okay, under the route option, I, that, that includes the route block module already. I'm sorry. Pick station includes the route module. The idea of the route module is that there is a delay time. How long does it take to get to the station you've picked? That's what this um, route time is for. And so just stick a uniform 5 to 15 there. Seconds. Okay. The only reason I added that walking time was so that you'd use this route time. Okay, and that's what a route is. It's how long it takes to get to the station. Okay, I think that's everything, at least for now. Oh, one other thing. Nope. Um, I did talk last time, on Wednesday, I talked about different random number streams. Since you're using, um, you're going to be using a paired t-test, you really want the arrival process to be the same. You're going to change the, um, you're going to change the random um, service times uh, simply because the, the order is going to be different because they're all serving one queue or they're serving separate queues. So in the create module, I would do the following. Under the inter-arrival time, time between arrivals, do um, expression, instead of using random exponential, and do expo there. E, X, P, O, whatever your number is, I don't know, 11, comma, here you can put the random number stream, 1, there. Or two, put, just put something other than 10. The default stream is 10. So what, whatever your in arrival time is, then do comma one, and that'll make all your arrivals for both cases exactly the same. That makes the paired t-test a little bit stronger. Okay? Okay, I think that's everything, at least for now.
Okay, let me say a word about statistics. As you've discovered by now, now that you've been looking at it for a half hour or so, or statistics, there's as much artwork to statistics as there is science. That's one of the reasons I prefer probability to statistics. I'm not very artistic, but it turns out there's as much artwork to statistics as science. Um, you know, you can't just go by that least squares criteria ARENA uses. That's not a good criteria. Um, you just have to <clears throat> just have to do whatever you think would be a good good fit. I can't tell you what um, I could tell you if something's bad, but I probably can't tell you if something's good or not. And there's more than one good choice. Uh, the larger the p value, the better, the more confidence you would have in it's the proper distribution. Um, a p value close to 0.05. I'd be kind of suspicious of that. Um, in the KS test, very often it just says p value greater than 0.15. Just report that then when I ask for it on the on the, your assignment sheet. Just put greater than 0.15. What that means is the KS statistics are a little bit harder to come by, and that the their internal table only goes up to 0.15 is what that means. But anything greater than one five, that means well, you got a pretty good confidence that it's acceptable according to the KS test. That's the conclusion. Okay. Now sometimes it might say less than point oh oh five. Stay away from anything like that. That's for sure. But the larger the p value, the better off you are. And you just have to try different things with and without a translation. <coughs> 